Every level 30 white knight worth their weight in Cheetos and manga comics knows a hero needs a proper side piece. You know, to save a fair maiden from uh, white walkers and chads, I guess. And as long as the product description says machete, it's not technically a sword. Right, my lady? So tip your hat and pause the hentai while we check out the dimensions of the condor tool and knife Yoshimi machete. Like the overall lingeth and waiteth. Wagit. Wagit? Is that how you pronounce it? With and without the sheath. The blade length. The cutting edge. As the tipping intensifies. Then you got that handle size and that grip area. Then handle thickness, spine thickness. Also thanks to Lemons EDC and Cirrus 1992 on Instagram for allowing me to steal their jokes without permission. Also, Bailey Sullenberger wanted about three jokes. So at his request, I removed most of them, including all the good ones. You're welcome, guys. The Yoshimi was a little shorter than I expected from its Tinder profile. I had in mind a standard mantelpiece, but it's a little shorter. It's a heavy elongated machete, so you need to take lots of vitamins. The disappointingly not enchanted 19-ish inch blade is made from 1075 high carbon steel and is sharp as shit out the box. Would you be surprised if I said I cut myself accidentally? It's coated with a black traction powder coat on the sides, but not the spine, so make sure you wipe it down after defending her honor, otherwise your tears may rust it the fuck up. The powder coat is pretty thick, and not like the slick Teflon on my Shrade. Even though it's handle heavy, it has a pretty beefy spine all the way down, so it might make a good pry bar. Okay, please never pry with your knives, that was a, that was a joke. That was one of the three. The Yoshimi is a full tanged blade, and it has two-toned micarta handle scale slabs over the, I would assume, solid tang, which no matter how you say it, isn't a compliment. But it feels heavy enough that there isn't probably any skeletonization. The handle scales are not removable unless you do some drilling, and I don't know if I would recommend that, but you're your own person. They are pretty smooth. Now, even if you've disciplined your body, you might have a hard time holding on to this one handed even if you've maxed out your one-handed. I know, that grinding. There isn't much of any of a pummel, pommel, pommel. So hard forward swings one-handed may cause you to lose a grip if you're not careful. And I'm not careful. I respect the handle for being very comfortable and pretty, but since it's a heavy blade, in theory you'll swing a lot. It's probably best to use two hands of which there is plenty of room. Maybe tape on a lanyard. Okay, don't use tape. The sheath. You're like, you mean the scabbard, bro? Well, I guess it's technically a S word, so yeah. The sheath is a Kydex and Mole compatible. Molly, Mole. I have trouble pronouncing words I've never heard anyone use in real life. But to mount it inside your trench coat, you'll probably have to figure out a rigging system. It has two snapping loops up top, keeping the handle secure. They're a little hard to close one-handed. I will say that, among other things. The back has multiple snaps and loops so you can mount it preferably to a backpack so people know to back the fuck off. But mostly because it's too large for a belt. Although it does have belt loops if you want to give it the good old college try. The nylon fabric is high quality woven green. It's pretty thick. And the snaps are fairly robust. But I can't stress enough, this is a heavy blade. And the kydex is joined together by rivets and glue. Up top, there's a good inch or more that is not riveted since the blade and the handle are thick. My sheath is starting to come apart near the top. The rivets down lower should keep it from getting larger, but I wonder how long before the kydex might start splitting out from that section. I feel like it's a slight design error on the sheath. You know, maybe they should have went with a similar sheath to their Tectana sword, which is leather. There's a tip for you, condor tool and knife. Also note there's no drain holes at the tip of the scabbard, so if you're defending a small group of villagers against a group of bandits in a heavy downpour, the tip may fill up with water. Drill some holes, bro. Alright, since we know it's more socially acceptable to buy a machete for yard work, or bushwhacking, than a sword, unfortunately, let's beat it up like the neighbors aren't watching. I mean, they probably are watching. 
Oh, that fine young man is just making a YouTube video. Oh, really? That's not that weird at all. Let me just start out by saying I'm not exactly sure what this was designed for. Okay, maybe for this channel. I can see somewhere in El Salvador, in a boardroom, of course in a high-rise, the design team. This is translated from Spanish, of course. Uh, there's only so many idiots that buy swords. What if we just called it a machete, even though it kind of looks like a katana? I don't know, maybe we could get some different idiots to buy it? Oh yeah, like the YouTube crowd. Because I felt the functionality of a machete always had to do with it being a thinner piece of metal so you could swing it fast and cut through light and medium sized branches. This is more like a long axe. Well, it's not quite as thick as an axe, but you get the point. It's two and a half pounds. It's pretty stout all the way to the tip and while it's not hard to swing, you have to really hold it if you want to swing it fast at a limb, which means two hands. So if you want more control, swing with both hands, grip tight. Okay, so it's hard to see, but you control where the force is on the blade by applying different amounts of pressure to each hand. Sorry the chug dude, I don't have a spare meat tire laying around, but I'm working on it. I gotta fit that into the channel budget. Mmm, meat tires. Okay, I literally have no idea how much I'll use this. It's terrible for food prep, you can't take it a lot of places because people will look at you weird. But if I hold it just right, I can take down an entire stock of bamboo in a swing or two. So, I guess if I ever move to a place without bamboo, I won't have an excuse for using it. I have some smaller choppers that may be better served, well, that are better served for breaking apart yard garbage, which I have a lot of. Things that are much lighter, that aren't as embarrassing for the neighbors to see me with, or people driving by. Lighter choppers mean you can swing them longer with less fatigue. I'm going to be reviewing the Junglist 2 in a few weeks, so keep an eye out for that. If you like this review, subscribe by clicking the bell, or just the subscribe button if you don't want to be alerted every time I take a piss. Comment. Give the video a thumbs up. Anyway, thanks for watching.